Yeah. All our beers suck, so, you know. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of At The Bar. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of At The Bar podcast. Day two of our SoFlo Summer Brewery Tour. Of course, I'm your host, Mike. And with me to my left, the man himself, Jeff, a.k.a. Hollywood. Hey. And then interrupt you. Good. I'm glad. You're doing so much better. And to his left, we have the house himself, Mr. Darren. How's it going? We are joined by two special guest guys across the table from us. We'll let them introduce themselves. I am so nervous. I've never really been special. We swap Daves. <laughs> I was uh, so nervous yeah. the first time. It my just, mom told me. We're just talking. Yeah. So we swap Daves, guys. Red Dave went home. Now we got Dave from Florida Beer Blog. What's up, Dave? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. And then next to Dave, we have Adam, correct, oh. from Bang and Banjo. Got it. How's it going? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing pretty well. <laughs> Happy, uh, you know, Sunday. Happy yeah, it's awesome. a nice little Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Yeah. We are not fathers. No. Not on this side. No. no. Well, I'm not a father. Oh, so we only got Dave. Dave's, Dave's the Knock solo dad over yes, here. Yes, my, my, my <laughs> lovely wife and my lovely daughter are here, which makes me very, very happy. <laughs> cool. So we were here at Bang and Banjo in Pompano Beach, Florida. Make Woo. our way back up to Florida. I mean, we're already in Florida, Orlando. <laughs> we had, we had a long Florida. day yesterday, guys. Really Some long. of us more than others. Yeah, that's true. Where did so you guys go yesterday? We went to Funky Buddha. Jeff got extra funky. I got real funky. At funky. And then we went to Lauder Ale, and Jeff got a little extra Lauder. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> yeah. Both uh, but, cool, awesome spots yeah, dude, down there. They're great. Fantastic, man. They're really nice and hospitable and great beers, and it was a great time. Lauder right, Ale is oh, definitely one yeah. of uh, Fort Lauderdale's best kept secrets. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you have no idea how to get there the first time I went. You literally have to make a U-turn before going into the security booth at Port Everglades. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I think I took a wrong turn I wonder, somewhere. Am I getting on a plane or am I going to a brewery? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many people drive up to the guard gate and it's like, hey, uh, can I get in to get to the brewery? And they're probably looking at I'm like, we got another one. <sighs> we got another one. That guy. Let's, yeah, let's John, tally him. That's John five today, said, guys. Uh, John said that they occasionally get people who come in and are like, oh, we were going to come in, but there was all these cops at the guard gate, and we don't want to mess with that. There's just <laughs> cops out front. So they're like, we just didn't come. And I'm like, wow, that's actually something that you probably do battle a little bit over there, the cops being in, in your front door, you know, on your front door. Yeah. So we're, we're going to introduce our, our two guests here more so. So, Dave, kind of tell us what you do with the uh, Florida Beer Blog. Um, well... I've been writing it for about a couple of years now, and my interest is just to report on and discuss and review beer from the Sunshine State. Because I'm, you know, other other states have established beer scenes, and I think Florida is really starting to take off. And sure. I want us to be known as more than just old people and Flocka users. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a crazy state down here. I mean, well, yeah. a little bit, just a tad. I yeah. really want somebody Piquita. to make yeah, a yeah. beer and call it Flocka Seagulls. <laughs> that's that's my hold on. Adam, right, Adam, right, right, right down. Come on, yeah, I got some notes <laughs> going. Flocka Seagulls. Right, what yeah. color do you want it? Um, I don't crazy know, green. Yeah, yeah, green. Neon green. That's fine. Green. Let me. Uh, we'll figure that out. Like a key lime. I, a key I just lime add cocoa nibs and and coconut because that's okay. a new craze. Three way yeah. collaboration brew. We just did it twice. We made it right now. There's You heard it here first, guys. A lime green key lime Berliner. With hey, we did, a, uh, yeah. we did a margarita goza actually, and that came out kind of nice. Berliners, no, that's uh, you know, we'll save that for the other guys. All right, that's I Jeff's appreciate favorite that. Style. No, uh, no, not at all. Uh-huh. My least favorite style of beer. So, so what's what's this been like, kind of day writing for the uh, the blog? Kind of how's that experience been? The process? Um, it's been interesting. I've gotten to the point where people know me and you know, kind of like what I do, which is great. You know, get invitations sometimes and. You know, being the father of a nine-month-old, a lot of those invitations have to be turned down, of course. which I'm perfectly happy with. But it's kind of been interesting seeing things relatively from the inside. I guess I've got one foot in the door. I'm not really the industry, but I'm not really outside of it anymore. Mm-hmm. Which is it's a good place to be great. in, yeah, for exactly. especially for a blogger and someone who writes content. Yeah. So, it's, it's so you pretty much put fun. this whole weekend together. Because I'm giving you the credit which, for yeah, it. Yeah, which we yeah. definitely appreciate. <laughs> this weekend a lot. would not have happened I if it wasn't be here for right Dave. Now if you yeah. Yeah. say if you're like, hey, come to Bang and Banjo on Sunday. Come to work like, on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, um, <laughs> I, I enjoy I enjoy doing that. I've gotten to the point where I've made enough contacts and I've gotten to know those contacts pretty well, to where I can 
you know, set things up and there are other things that I know that I'm not really supposed to know, but that I was able to, you know, put a hand in and kind of makes yeah, me I mean, happy. You, you helped us get into Funky Buddha and John and oh, John's a great Water Ale and, you know, all them and oh, yeah. here and then do mm-hmm. South later. Like, yeah, I'm definitely happy that you could come here because this yeah. is this is sort of indicative of the, I guess, Wild West of Florida beer because they're a good brewery. They're small. If you're not in Broward County, you don't know who they are. But if you're in here, it's, you know, they're a quality, quality product, even though the milk stout is not on tap. And that breaks my heart. <laughs> Dave, I'll write you the check for that. <laughs> but uh, it breaks my heart that Five the milk stout cents. isn't on tap uh, either. Actually, uh, you know, it's just funny. We uh, we hired some new brewers and, you know, we put our brewing schedule up on the board. And normally if we say, all right, it's time to crash a beer and get it ready. Um, we'll check the gravity and go through the process. And, you know, it's like, okay, it's good. Let's crash it now. Right. But uh, our new brewer was like, all right, crash it. Just crash it. And uh, it, so we're, uh, we're having to have that ferment a little bit longer and gotcha. you know, go through some different things to make sure. You know, new hire paperwork. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know. you just got here. You already messed up. You're gone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Paying a banjo out of here. Oh, cool. <laughs> so what do you do, Adam? Um, it's more of a question of what don't I do yesterday I uh, uh, for an example my week I uh, did sales two or three days we just got some new tanks so we're cranking out some beer yesterday I did a a double brew a nice little 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. a day Um, trained some staff let's see I'm behind the bar from time to time I go to events I clean the bathrooms when uh, you know my employees decide to slack it up just don't clean them before you brew well, usually I use that water for, oh, oh well, I'm not supposed to tell you guys that. No, uh, you know, I'm just... Secondary uh, fermentation. I, I, I do whatever I need to do that day and some. So, I yeah. mean, it's just, yeah, I'm, I don't want to say I play to win, but I'm just playing to do, have Bang & Banjo be the best that it can be. Yeah. Awesome. I understand that completely. I'm, I'm the GM of a, of a world of beer, so... You do everything you can, no matter what the job is or whose job it is, until it's done. Yeah. That's how uh, it works. Absolutely. absolutely. Jeff doesn't do that, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Never. No. My background has been in uh, food service management for, like, 10 years now. So I used to work for companies like Airmark, Compass, Panera Bread, some of uh, you know, big ballers out there. And uh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what made you come up with the name Bangin' Banjo. So, I'll give you guys the uh, longer version of the story. Back in 2011, uh, Matt, my uh, partner in this, and uh, Carl, who's uh, a silent partner, if you will. They're two of my best friends. Um, Every Sunday was watch football, brew beer, drink beer. Whatever order we felt like it. Yeah, Yeah, you know, pretty standard. Um, And it was in 2011 or to whatever year the Steelers and Cardinals played in the Super Bowl. Carl is a banjo player. He's also a huge Steeler fan. So we weren't going to brew. We had our kitchen wasn't a kitchen. It was like a little Pico house brewery. Mm -hmm. And he uh, went home uh, for watching a game with his dad. And we're like, no, we're just going to have a Super Bowl. We're not working on the Super Bowl. So he went home. Matt and I brewed up a black IPA. Um, Went ahead, watched the game. Steelers won, yada, yada. Life goes on. A couple months later, his birthday's coming up. And, you know, as homebrewers do, they name their beers. And we happen to name that one the Bang & Banjo. And you know, respect and appreciation to Carl and drank it and actually came out, you know, better than the rest of the swill we were making at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, push come to shove, our beer is, you know, people are actually drinking our beer when they come over instead of like, hey, you got any, you know, Oscar Blues here? Uh, yeah. But no, people were drinking our beer and we were like, all right, let's do this. But, you know, you need a name. Branding and marketing is so important, uh, especially in the beer scene now. Just Absolutely. make it so... We uh, went bang and banjo. I mean, not only is it sentimental, it's uh, you got the whole alliteration thing, which is awesome. Everyone mm-hmm. loves alliteration, and we're fans of bluegrass and uh, you know folk music. So absolutely, now, I'm awesome. gonna ask you a question that I've always wondered because you've got the banjo, the banjo playing Florida Panther on your logo. Sure. Um, just because you're down here, or because of the hockey team. So what? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I like, Jeff yeah. and Mike are looking I'm like, where? I'm like, look, I was looking up at this depending, one. Depending, like, depending, which is funny because you can't not pass that coming into the building. It's kind of as tall as I am, and I'm not exactly a short guy. But <laughs> I dig his green suit. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, green, uh, green is certainly one of my favorite colors. I mean, all earthy, woody colors are great. And you know, when we were putting this place together, uh, we were 
or like, you know, what colors and, um, you know, the first thing we came up with when we said, all right, bang and banjo, let's do it, was this cricket logo. And it actually looked pretty cool. Our artist does a, who was doing that, did a great job at the time and looked at that. And then I looked at Terrapin's logo and I was like, we've got a cricket playing a banjo and they have a turtle playing a banjo. I was like, I don't think Terrapin's going to like that very much. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, man, let's, what's something that's local? What's something that's like really going to bring like the heart of where we come from and what we do, you know, to our taster. And I was like, for the panther. I was yeah. like, you know, if we get in trouble for that. It's a puma, but for now it's a panther. <laughs> it's a panther, and I don't know if I you mean, know it's exactly. It's not the Florida Panthers. It's a Florida panther. It's a, exactly, it's not, it's it's not the game's panther. Right, there's no it's just blue the state's red panther. Red well, I don't know if you red. know exactly how close you are to the Florida Everglades right now. Yeah, fifteen minutes down the road, oh, yeah. and it's the Everglades. Really. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Actually, where the Florida Panthers play, you're probably 20 minutes away from them. You've got their arena. You've got the Sawgrass Expressway, and then that's Everglades yeah. all over to the West Coast. Yeah, that's where we hide all the dead bodies in Florida. So you I'm have no idea. Familiar. That's what. Yeah. Well, yeah. the alligators eat them. Right. Oh. Ooh. Too, soon? Too, too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut that out. Yeah. We can cut that out. We'll see if we can cut that. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> So, <laughs> but I like how, like, you know, the bang and banjo, bluegrass, folk, you have, you know, the breweries, like, has wood, has, the you flight, know. The, 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 the flight decks the are, are flight awesome. Decks. Which I think South Florida is doing very well. Water L has the, like, the propellers. propellers. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys have a banjo. Funky Buddha has, like, the Buddha. And it's, like, so, I don't know, it's really creative and cool. And, like, really nice warm colors. And minus the red wall behind us. But it's actually it's, brown. It's, very, it's brown. Yeah. Are you co are you He's color He's so colorblind. <laughs> exactly how much beer did you have yesterday? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Enough to bleach his retinas, I guess. I don't freak <laughs> So yeah. you got the wood there. I mean, it's, everything's like really kind of like in style in terms of like, you know, what you're trying to portray. So it's, I think it's really cool. It's the little things like that that go unnoticed a lot of times when you go to breweries. When you look at a, a standard flight deck and you're just like, all right, I got a flight. Cool. But like when you do something cool with it, it, it resonates with people and it's something that you recognize. People want to take pictures of that flight, put it up um, on social media. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, Concrete you know. Beach, their flight deck is an artist palette, which is yeah, very that's, nice. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Big Storm. I was just at a Big Storm in Odessa. Their flight deck is, you know, it's four, but it's metal. It's a steel bar and the holes for their flight glasses were precision machine drilled by a company that does um, like military hardware oh, in cool. that area. So first of all, it's incredibly heavy. You do not want to drop this thing. Um, but if you need, if the zombies attack, you can you know, just chop the big glasses. Storm. Nice one. Big storm. Boom. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see. Not too many people want to just do, you know, here's a plunk of wood or here are just some individual glasses. Let's have some fun with it. You should, yeah. yeah. You should. Well, I mean, yours are fantastic. Thank yeah. you. They're really I, cool. You know, it, I don't even remember what our original idea was before my brother came forward and was like, hey, let's do band. And we tried making those ourselves. And I was like, no, we'll, let's just get a CNC guy, laser engrave. And, and, you know, it's one of those things that when you're looking at who you are and what you're doing, yeah. you know, you have to embody that from, you know, top to bottom, left to right. And uh, I, I love the response we get from it. You know, I rarely have someone come in here and be like, oh, pfft lame you know it's, yeah. a lot of the time people take a picture on instagram and i just love seeing the pictures on the internet that yeah. like you know it's cool it's like yo that's my stuff right there yeah exactly yeah. you dig it yeah definitely <laughs> but i mean I even, even the vibe you know with the lights too like every other light is a growler or a mason that you, jar or a mason jar right but the logo is on the light fixtures for each of the i guess it's amber bulb well, actually, um, the old school. All those are um, they're the Edison bulbs, but they're all actually LED. And what we did was we got a glass cutter and we cut bottoms of our growlers. So and that's we just cool. Yeah, made yeah, yeah, our yeah. own fixtures. We were actually the general contractors for this entire project. So I can tell <laughs> <Nice>. you <laughs> where every nook, crevice, painted drywall, anything you need to know. All the walls were actually with the wood on them. They were old pallets. I found a hundred pallets. All I had to do was rent a budget truck. Yep. Bring them over here, which I did. Got a planer from Home Depot, pass them through the planer, and then we used a lot of glue and a lot of nail nails and a nail gun and put them all up and then yeah. varnish them. And that's why they kind of shine I mean, a it turns out yeah. it turned out very well. Thanks. Very I mean, well. I, I have no construction experience aside from this. <laughs> nice. you couldn't I, bet tell you could, I bet you can do it now, though. Uh, <laughs> you learned because <laughs> it know, looks real I, good. Hey, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
And then, like, I also enjoy, you know, how, you know, just above, you know, the wood wall, you have, you know, just lines of bottles of all, you know, not just local stuff, but, like, you got brewery here, you got Pliny the Elder around the corner, you have Canteon above the door right there, Lagunitas, I mean, all, all the way through Terrapin, Rogue, and... I didn't get until into uh, Untapped until last year, so this was my version of Untapped. <laughs> so uh, ha- have you checked these all in? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, so this uh, was your own personal collection? And you... uh, yeah, this is my personal. Uh, I'd say I'm awesome. responsible for imbibing uh, at least 98 to 97% of them. Carl had a few he did solo. Uh, Matt, uh, my other part, uh, Matt and sure. Carl, they both, uh, you know, but is this, I was participating. In. Is this decoration or is this a cry for help? Um, <laughs> depends who you ask and depends okay. on the day. So. I do want to bring one more thing. Hopefully you can take a picture of it. Is the little hop terrace that you yeah, pass also that was by weed. as I'm you I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's, you have the hops above the terrace there. You have them kind of around the, uh, the draft line the there. You have them. Yeah, you have Gorgeous. them kind of. Background to the uh, to the taps is that where'd you find that? So it's black walnut. <coughs> Excuse me, it's uh, black walnut, same as the uh, the bar top. Oh, cool. Uh, we got it from upstate New York. Um, a guy was shipping down some wood that he made furniture out of, and uh, he had room to fit some more stuff. So I found him, and I was like, "Hey, you know, uh, I want to buy this. Can you bring it down to me?" And uh, actually, we didn't even plan for that little piece over there. Um, for the taps, it just he had an extra piece and he brought it in. I was like, "Cool, I'll take that too." Cool, and it uh, definitely made good. Yeah, use it of looks it. Cool. it looks really nice. It's definitely very cool. It almost looks driftwoody, um, but like polished and refined. Um, it fits in with that Florida vibe, with the, and also everything else. It just it looks great. Yeah, I mean, the inspiration is definitely uh, North Florida in here. People come in here, they say Colorado, they say Asheville, they say this, and I'm just yeah. like, I've never been to Asheville or Colorado. So if you're telling me, you know, that's what inspired me, it didn't. Like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to Asheville for the first time uh, next month. I'm stoked. But, yeah, North Florida. Swamphead was uh, my jam uh, several years. Uh, love those guys. Uh, and, you know, just the Gainesville vibe, that whole north central Florida is mm-hmm. it's just a chill place. Did you go to UF? Yes. Okay. There's a gator flag on yeah, the we it. Yeah, we noticed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we scoffed at it. <laughs> so I don't care if you scoffed okay. at it. You know, you're scoffed so because you, you weren't Florida good enough State to get people? in, clearly. Or UCF. <laughs> oh, you're UCF. Yeah. Okay. I'm a Seminole. Oh, we got a really oh, we good vinyl yeah. table. <laughs> <laughs> you stay at, well, actually, I think no, we're the bigger you're on the tr- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not even, we're like a side thought for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you guys just promote, you have a lot of people in your school. We That's have a lot of people, yeah. though, we do. We're and innovative, we, we accept everybody. <laughs> at this point, you're still a side thought for USF. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Let's get Tampa going man. on and then bring it up. <laughs> oh, no, Dave, that, that was deep, man. <laughs> if USF was, was, was good at any sports, then maybe. <laughs> In time. Oh, wow. In time. <laughs> well, one so day beer, here, guys, um, relax. <laughs> so kind of tell us what your brewing system is. Um, So it's a three-barrel uh, electric, uh, excuse me, a three-barrel <laughs> electric system from Stout Tanks. Um. There's a total of seven elements in it. We have a hot liquor tank, mash water ton, uh, and, you know, boil kettle, of course. Mm. Um, it's actually, you know, we joke, it's kind of like a really, really fancy rim system, uh, rims homebrew system, except right. we're doing 93-gallon batches instead of 15. Yeah, um, sure. We, you know, everything we got is commercial grade. Uh, we bought everything brand new. We didn't want, you know... Uh, to, the only actual thing we didn't buy brand new is we built our own keg washer, and uh, oh god, their words cannot express my hate for that. Even though it saved us a ton of money, we probably right. spent and put in over the past year uh, the amount of time, work, money to like keep improving it uh, that it, one would have cost up front. Oh yeah, absolutely. So when uh, I've, I'm surprised I asked this before, when did you guys open? Um, officially July 22nd. So next year will be uh, next month. Sorry, will be, be our one, one year. year. Okay. Yep. Nice. Cool. Wow. So starting awesome. to put together yeah. a party for that. I think I we're was actually at, there for that opening night. That was a lot. I of remember fun. that you yeah. gave me your card. You're like, yeah. I'm Dave. Love yeah. the beers, and um, that was that, and that's all I remember. Yeah, Adam is <laughs> Adam is sort of indicative of what I've seen from most Florida brewers, which is they're very open, they're very warm, they're very comforting, mm-hmm. or, right. you know, welcoming. And it's like, if I have a question, I get an answer, and it's really no big deal, because I'm just, yeah. Yeah. in essence, I try to just support them. 
right. hey, we appreciate the support yeah. you've given us, you know, since day one, literally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's something where I'm a big believer in community and building relationships. I didn't open a brewery to, you know, just make beer and hide in a corner somewhere. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I believe that, no, I mean, you yeah. know, a lot of people looking to, you know, brew and get in the industry love making beer, but... You know, there's a whole marketing, building relationship business side of it that, yeah. you know, a lot of question marks that we certainly had. But uh, I like to think that, you know, we're a personable, you know, group mm -hmm. of people. And, you know, I have nothing to hide. Transparency is, you know, a good way to lead your life, in my opinion. At least. It's yeah. the easiest way to build trust with your customers, too. Certainly. Being open about what you're doing and, and it, it instantly makes a connection to the consumer. Sure. And they want to come back for that reason. So, yeah, 90% yeah. um, of the time when I come in here, obviously not today, but the doors to the brew house are usually open and they'll rope it off. But you know, there's, see you what's can still look there's inside, actually right? a good reason for that. Um, okay. Normally we do have our double doors open, but we uh, so we're, we're one of the few breweries to have a air conditioned back uh, area. Thank you. But <laughs> we're doing a uh, Saison's back there right now. So okay. the AC is cranked up. So if we had the doors open, this little AC over there that you're seeing over the trellis yeah. is uh, going to just start trying to crank the cold air. And we figured it was just best, you know, let it be a little warmer back there, close it off. You know, right. people can ask questions of like, why are the doors? The doors are in 11 months. The doors have never been closed back. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's. It's for good reason. For good reason. Good reason. People will enjoy the uh, Saison uh, that we'll be putting out yeah. for it. How many styles do you guys do? Um, I will say one thing. They are the king of the Goza. Yeah. That's their thing, man. Oh, yeah. We'll have to see about that. Oh, yeah. Um, we were just at Rap two weeks ago. Rap. Uh, and their Goza their is, is, is uh, yeah. the That's best I've ever had. They won um, Florida Beer Champion. Uh, uh, that Flo beer won gold, yeah. Yeah, that beer yeah. won uh, gold. We entered ours in, and uh, actually, uh, I think next year I'm going to try it in a fruit category instead, rather cool. than a traditional. But right. that point aside, um, I'm of the belief we can brew any style. Uh, we can brew it, you know, extremely well. Um, may not be the absolute best king, you know, of that style, sure. but um, I don't think there's a limit to what style we can or can't do, aside from maybe you know, true Belgian. Gooses and lambics and you know so, right 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 but uh i don't know dave i mean has there ever been a style of beer here where you're just like mm, like no actually you hit it out of the park on a pretty consistent basis i um yeah i can't think of anything that i did not enjoy immensely there are a couple beers that i wish that i had had that i didn't get to fast enough unfortunately <laughs> right. but um yeah it's the, one of the reasons why i wanted to make sure that you know, at the bar could get down here is because they, you just deliver a consistently quality product. And I have no problems with saying, no, hey, you want a good good brewery? Let's go there. Oh, and yeah. you're like five minutes from my house, which makes it even better. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really incredible for a brewery that's only been open for a year to have that kind of praise from somebody who does what he does. And, uh, and then also, I mean, Hitting style, I think, is the is the biggest thing. From there, there's the doors are wide open. If you hit style with your with your you know beers, every single one, at least at the minimum, hits what you're trying to brew. You already start establishing some credibility, and then from there, you can start doing treatments, different things, exactly, um, and really build up you know some crazy off the wall stuff. But at the minimum, you need to hit style, and it seems like it's so simple, but we've said it a hundred times on the show. There's so many breweries they don't hit style. They come in and they think that they have the best take on whatever beer it is, and they've just bastardized the style to the point that it's unrecognizable. And the beer might even taste good, but you're not getting what you're paying for. Right, and the approach we take is, you know, let's, let's just brew good beer. Like, you yeah. know what, we'll worry about, we just got some bourbon barrels back there, first barrels we've gotten, and we're sitting there thinking, you know, like, what do we do with them? What do we put in them? Like, you know, what what do we what milk stout. of our you know <laughs> actually stout. what of our put Odin in one of those? <laughs> Maybe the second round uh, <laughs> of using those, but uh, you know, it's just one of those things where we no different than many other breweries. We figure out what kind of beer we want. Read about the style. Read about the history about it. Like, why would someone want to drink this beer, regardless of the type of beer it is? What are the reasons for drinking this beer? And then we build it from the ground up, you know, water profiles, your malt bill, hops. And I mean, every brewer does that. And I, I don't know their approach. I know that Matt, 
specifically. Uh, he designs the recipes himself. He'll ask me about it. You know, I'll give some inputs and suggestions. But for the most part, he does most of that on his own. And uh, cool. just he's done a phenomenal job. Just you know, beer after beer after beer. You know, especially with brewing it too. A lot of sure. the times for these beers, it's uh, our first time uh, brewing them mm-hmm. on uh, you know just period. So, yeah. you guys, ready to jump in? Yeah. 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 Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. Stay tuned for part two where we go dive into some banging banjos beers. We'll be right back. Banging <laughs> beer, beers banging of banjo. banjo. And we're back for part two here at Banging Banjo in Pompano Beach. So where we get we have uh, Adam. We have your Goza right here in front of us. Sure. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, little history behind us brewing the Goza. We were originally going to do an American wheat that's sitting in front of me as a year-round beer. We sat down in front of an Anderson Valley Goza, and they gave me the ink and the Holy Goza, and I was mm-hmm. like, we need to do this mm-hmm. as a year-round beer. Yeah. Let's do a year-round Goza. The Kimmy's fantastic. The Kimmy yeah. is well, probably my favorite Goza outside of our own. Um, and so we wanted to also have the Goza have like kind of a punch of Florida to it a little bit, and um, that's where the citrus comes in. So, you know, you get that light cereal flavor. It's tart, but not funky, light and refreshing in at 4.4%. There's salt in there. You can taste it, oh, but yeah. it's not overwhelming. It's not like someone just sprinkled salt in your mouth either. Right. Um, and the orange is kind of there and smooths everything out with, a, you know, a little bit of a cereal finish. Yeah, some of them do get salty to the point that they're almost... Absurd. You know, absurd, to, hard to drink. And um, this one's really nice, light. It's it really doesn't nice. bite your throat. It doesn't make your jaw lock up. It's a very light sour, but it has that tartness to it. So it's right. a, it's a really good balanced Goza. Thank you. Yeah, it's really good. You get you get the, the saltiness. You get the orange zest to it, but it's not overwhelming. It's not drying your mouth out. You can actually get a second one. And, and or third Gozas or fourth. are very hard to find that are like that. A lot of breweries tend to over sour it, over, you yeah. know, dry it out and... This one's actually not that. We actually so. did a uh, an Anything Goza Fest in uh, December. It uh, happened to fall the same day that uh, Saltwater had uh, their anniversary, so we didn't get as large of a crowd as we wanted, but uh, we'll be doing it again this year. And we had nine different treatments there using that Goza as a base. Flavors included uh, peach green tea, pomegranate hibiscus, mango habanero, we did strawberry basil, tasted like pizza because of the basil, but uh, <laughs> cucumber mint and uh, cranberry apple, among a few others I can. Uh, we didn't I apric- love everything you apricot just said. Cran apple really is good. like I love everything juice. you just said. Yeah. Cran <laughs> apple juice. This, uh, <laughs> this next year, I'm Hibiscus. hoping that we can double the amount of treatments we did and also bring in some outside breweries to bring their – and just basically, you know, anything goes. Yeah, anything goes. Nice. Uh, I, I like it. Like that. So, Darren, what, what's, what's uh, number two? What we got here? Number two is uh, Cypress. Cypress. So, Cypress Creek Cream Ale. Um, we originally wanted to name it Cripple Creek. It's a famous uh, banjo mm-hmm. folk song, but uh, someone had already named a beer that. And oh, wow. We really like Come Creek. On, it's a very creek. traditional cream ale. Uh, there's no vanilla, you know, nothing nothing crazy about it. It's just right. an easy drinking lawnmower beer, as I yeah. like to say. A little bit of corn, a little bit of honey malt, and, uh, you know, a lot of base malts and just again focusing on the sweetness without being too sweet but still very crushable oh it's it's that's really that's great really, i like the fact that you that's described awesome. the cream ale as your lawnmower beer because no one ever says that it's like a oh i have beer. a i have a lager i have a, a narragansett style-esque you know yeah, it's a lawnmower but beer you're the first person that's ever said my cream ale is a lawnmower beer that is how and i go awesome. into bars that and sell awesome. it to them that's probably why no one buys it no one's driving <laughs> lawnmowers no one's driving lawnmowers at bars but you know heck if i went to a john deere store if they had a tap they'd put that on tap this is it's, su- it's it's super creamy yeah it's I really creamy it it's very smooth and just it has that sweetness like you said that it's it all the way through mm-hmm. uh from from beginning to end it's it's sweet i almost get like it's not vanilla but it's like that kind of sweetness to it right and, that, and that's it's from the honey, the honey malt yeah. and yeah. that's from the honey malt it, you know lens because you get that um i like to use this phrase a lot that uh, cereal flavor from the grain mm-hmm. and the honey malt is almost like taking your normal cheerios and just kind of you know just putting a little bit of that sugar to make them honey nut yeah. cheerios and that's uh, really good thank it's you. good yeah it's like honey nut cheerios <laughs> I've never, I've never, that's like one of my harder styles to get into is cream ales, and that's delicious. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's actually been, uh, it just took over the Hop of the Muffin as our best seller in the tavern okay, the last nice. couple months. Absolutely. Dave, what are you thinking? 
I'm actually pretty happy with the cream ale because I think it's, like you were saying, it's very true to style. It's very soft. It's very, I don't want to say unassuming because it's definitely not aggressive, which is fantastic. A good standard cream ale, while it does not have cream in it, just to let you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got, you know, a very low hop character. It's somewhat strong malt character. It's, you're not, it's not a syrup, but it's a very light I just want to say the word again, unassuming sort of a beer. It's perfect. It's right. light. It's yeah. easy to drink. It's infinitely sessionable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Fantastic. Absolutely. And, uh, and um, you could, I'm surprised that you haven't done some treatments of that. Well, we actually have. Oh, I will stop. Um, oh, tell we'll us. Be all right. Yeah. We'll be doing <laughs> oh, yeah. well, let's go into it. <laughs> um, some blood do. orange into that. That'd be fantastic. So we haven't messed around with blood orange yet at all. It's on our list of uh, things to do. Uh, we've done our Annie's raspberry cream ale. Is I did have that one. That was is, actually fantastic. I completely is just, forgot. <laughs> it's just <laughs> that beer. We did not change a thing about the recipe and just, you know, a lot of raspberry puree. Uh, I forgot about that one. That beer was so good and so flavorful. You could swear that you could feel the raspberry seeds in your mouth. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're blowing yeah. us away right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll just be doing, uh, I don't have the list in front of me, uh, just because uh, Matt and our new brewer were coming up with ideas for him. Uh, I can take a gander back there on our next break and see if the list is over there. But I know we're doing two or three things with it. And we actually did a version, um, a raspberry jalapeno version of that as well. That's and that good. That's, that's got to be good. Darren just yeah. picked his head up like, say what? Well, I do like <laughs> spice beers. So. Uh, you probably would have liked our scorpion pepper goza then, and I actually have a ghost pepper goza back there. Uh, I can give you a pull a little bit from. Oh. I don't. I'm. It's I'm. Hot. I'm in love with love spicy ghost beers. Face. Ghost face killer is like a beer I actually drink. I have a funny story. So I love. Lo well, I have a few myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, first Hogtown Beer Festival. I uh, was a Hogtown brewer. That festival is put on by the Hogtown Brewers for nonprofits, and they said, "Okay, you're in charge of the Twisted Pines booth. Um, here, pour Billy's Chilies and oh. Ghostface, Ghostface Killer." And I was that was their selection. Of Two it. pepper beers. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's horrible. And uh, I just got to see like all the frat guys coming up to the booth and just being like, "Bro, try this, bro, try this." And the, the, I'm pouring them uh, Billy Shelley's, and they're just like freaking out about it. I'm like, "Hey guys, who likes ghost peppers?" That's the mild <laughs> one. Hey yeah, guys. that's the mild one. And they're just like, "Oh!" And they're like pouring, <laughs> laughing at each other, and I kind of had fun. That was my uh, first beer festival. I was like participating yeah. in as a uh, on the other side of the that's table cool. that's the i uh, i picked up a four pack when i was in colorado and brought it back with me and i went to a party so i decided to put it in a koozie and rip the top label off Ooh. and just walk around drinking the beer because i actually enjoy it people would walk up to me and be like oh what are you drinking i'm like dude you got to try it it's a badass beer you're gonna fucking love it so i hand it to them and they'd take a sip and everybody's like oh my god like I'm they dying. think their face is melting <laughs> yeah. and i'm like oh i didn't tell you it was hot i'm sorry i forgot you know <laughs> <Happy>. <laughs> got like 20 people that oh, they that's just great. they were not happy campers hey yeah, it's i all got good the fun. same girl twice uh, actually she <laughs> she came up like just forgot that i did it earlier i guess i don't know <laughs> But it's just that much more fun. Yeah, it was it was a good time. But I love that beer. I cook I got the with same it. Grill twice. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so Darren, what do we got? Number three. Uh, Odin's. Is the nice Odin's. Oh, this is the one. So this, this is, is a, the one. This is a beer style that doesn't really exist. It's a Belgian red. The best way I describe it is is taking amber ale, um, or you know some Ooh. kind of red ale, and just make it Belgian. You know, like if you know, wow. Um, the nose is very Belgian. Very, very Belgian. Yeah. But it's got a creaminess to it that just like the spices and the flavor. I mean, it's just, it is so smooth. And it's crushable also. What's the ABV on this one? 4.9. That, okay. one that one may be 5.1 actually, but typically we're around 4.95. Yeah, that's nice really good mm -hmm. um, caramel nutty sweetness oh, yeah. to it. Yeah. And uh, it has like a little spice mm -hmm. um, that kind of hits you in the middle. And the nose is very Belgian. Um but it also doesn't come out full like syrupy Belgian-y kind of. So it's it's light and approachable with a ton of good flavor and a lot of malt flavor, which which is what I yeah. love from a red ale because you can either have a red ale that's basically just an IPA in different clothing, or you could have a red ale where they really let the caramel malt shine. And mm -hmm. that's what I love right. so yeah. much about this one. But you add that Belgian wet sock sort of yeah. aroma and just enough of a nice little peppery kick to it. <laughs> It's just, that's easily one of my favorites. Wet, I've never heard wet sock aroma, but I oh, like yeah. it. Oh, with Belgians, that's a good... If, if, 
if I can't smell my middle school gymnasium locker room, I'm just not as interested. Yeah. In no, it. Uh, 100%. I mean, yeah. with that beer, too, the yeast is uh, fermented a little bit colder, so that way the Belgian characters from the yeast don't completely come out. We don't want them to... The beer is not about... Even though, yes, it is a Belgian red, it's not about being a Belgian-style beer. It's about it's a red ale that mm-hmm. just happens to be Belgian. Right. Yeah, I, I can pick up on the... I, I get the Belgian yeast kind of towards the back end. Almost like a, a little bit of banana comes through, mm-hmm. which is adds to like the the creaminess of the red. It's so just so, it's a pretty complex beer, all nice things hybrid. considered. Yeah. Without being like you know really aggressive. Right. So Darren, what's num- what's number four? Uh, Judy's Amber. That's my Judy's favorite. Amber. So what, is, what about this one? So Judy's Amber Ale. Um, Judy's is just it's a uh, it's a little hop forward. But it's got a malt backbone to it that just takes over. You get those Cascade and uh, Mount Hood hops in it. Um, and then it's just you're switching over to the sweet, malty beer that just rolls over your tongue. It's smooth. Uh, comes in actually of the non, of all our beers, it's the second highest uh, ABV aside from the IPA of our uh, year-round beers. Um, it's just it's an easy drinking amber. It's actually one of the few beers I can um, drink while eating like that beer is excellent with pizza i can always oh, yeah, I norm- can, oh, yeah. normally i don't drink beer with food i'll order a beer drink it eat my food order another beer with that beer i can drink that you know sub water you know whatever else i'm drinking yeah i like that a lot it's uh it's malty on the nose more than hoppy to me i, I get a ton of that like like we talked about with the last one that spice and that that like sweet nose and then I, I, I didn't get a ton of hops in it really well, through the through the taste, which I, I kind of like. I, I prefer that myself. Right. And um, as David said, you know, sometimes a red ale is masquerading as an IPA, but it's this one's <laughs> not. You know, this is actually a, a red ale. Yeah, it's um, the hop character in it is actually really really driven um, by earthy and floral notes. Okay. A lot of times when uh, you know there are very few beers out there that you say because I wouldn't call it a hoppy beer. But there's definitely a decent, well, I guess compared to, you know, a lot of our other beers, a decent amount of hops in there. But they're not that dank, fruity, you know. It's more floral, earthy. Uh, it's very uh, balanced and rounded. Yeah. In that oh, definitely. Uh, regard. Mm-hmm. This is good. I like, I'm, I'm liking all of them a lot so far, yeah. So, Darren, what's wrapping up part two? Hop is the hop muffin. Hop of the muffin. Hop it's a Seinfeld pun. Oh, yeah. Top of the it. muffin. Yeah. So, hop of the muffin. To oh, you. I remember the muffin top business one. That was funny. <laughs> so, what about this one? So is that your IPA? That is our year-round IPA. Um, that's, no, that's nosy with that. It's uh, yeah. got Columbus and, Summit, uh, Columbus and Summit hops in it. So, you get that piney fruitiness, a little bit of citrus in there. Um, you know, we drank a lot of Two-Hearted, and, you know, that was our inspiration for that beer, just yeah. our take on... An American IPA that isn't so thin that all you get is hops. We wanted an IPA that, you know, you can drink and not feel like it's, like, just hopped up water. Sure. Uh, there's caramel malt in there, too, so it kind of backs the uh, the body of the beer up uh, quite a bit as well. And some mm-hmm. rye, which uh, that spiciness adds yeah. to the flavor. And it kind of cuts the finish a little bit short, too, which is good because mm-hmm. sometimes it gets a little cotton mouthy and, and sure. dry and um th- that finish is, is really nice on that i Thank do you. get that uh a little bit of that like dank funkness in the middle but that's what you're expecting if you're ordering sure, an yeah. ipa yeah. um and i got the pininess on the nose instantly it's just very piney and a little bit resiny and and i, I mean it's a it's a really complex ipa and it's, it's pretty good I, I like it a lot i'm not a big ipa fan but the maltiness helps me like this beer a lot. Exactly. And, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's got a great finish, and it doesn't give me that cotton mouth taste. Right. It's a uh, hot blasted at the end in the process. So basically what that means is is we are not um, adding any hops to that beer until we've turned off the boil. So during that whirlpool and, uh, you know, knockout end of beer uh, boiling process, that's when the hops are uh, isomerizing at uh, uh, isomerizing, sorry, I always pronounce that word wrong. <laughs> and uh, so there's not that much bitterness and not that much like resiny stickiness at the end of it that, like you said, you get that mm-hmm. cotton mouth. It's, you know, we wanted something that was smoother and we get a lot of non IPA drinkers that uh, will drink the heck out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dave, which one do you, uh, you like the IPA? 
I actually like, I'm kind of with you, I'm not really an IPA fan, which is incredibly difficult for a Florida beer blogger. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> yeah. So I've just been given some face melters. And it's frustrating because I enjoy, especially because it has a big citrus nose, it has a big, big orangey, lemony sort of flavor to it. And it's difficult, but you've managed to do this, to give me those flavors without burning my tongue right. and I am enjoying that that's sort of the new face of IPAs I think that a lot of people especially in Florida they're starting to finally rebel against the West Coast IPA yeah Which especially is, with the New England kind of coming the up the New and, England IPA is the new craze and it's uh, I, I vastly pr- prefer it to the West Coast and the I, I like the juice bomb a little bit more than anything else but that's <laughs> just because I, I really am not crazy about hops and yeah. just over hopped 100 and 140 IBU, like, you don't need that. Who needs no. that? <laughs> your tongue can't process that's that. You're beer, just melting your face. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know. So, go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. I was going to say, so with uh, the hops and uh, everything, it really comes down to a lot of times with what I think Florida is doing now is uh, not so much even New England-style IPAs, but just more, more IPAs you can drink in this heat and humidity. Mm-hmm. That's really what it's coming down uh, down here. You don't want something so thin that you know you can't. You don't want to drink the IPA because it's just so bitter. You want something uh, you know almost like a Founders All Day. Yeah, just very sessionable, but you know still pungent with flavor. Yeah, we almost have our own style of IPA coming out of Florida now. It's like a approachable light citrus IPA that you know is un- unassuming, unoffensive. You know, certainly. Yeah, the Florida. Uh, I, I readily try to call Florida PAs like that, you know, an FPA, something that's more citrus than it is bitter and only for the, the bring it in for the flavoring and not really for the alpha acids. Right. Yeah, certainly. You heard alpha it here acids first, and I want the money if you use that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, alpha acids, that's all part of the science. Um, for sure, you can look at that stuff all day, alpha acids, IBUs. Bottom line, you know, part of not only my, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Part of my, uh, I guess, principles when it comes to beer is just make beer you can drink. Don't look at the numbers. Just just make a, put a beer in front of me that I, I can drink two or three of. You know, uh, there are a lot of beers that, sure, you got to have your higher ABV beers, but... When I want to drink beer, I want to drink beer, plural, beers. Right. <laughs> I think that's what all five we just had, I think, nailed that on the head is no matter the style, every single one is drinkable. And I'm sorry and can, I didn't have, have the Moodoo Voodoo Milk Stout today. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We'll forgive you this time. I, d- I don't forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> I but, want it. But everything is, is, is drinkable. It's full of flavor. It's not – you're not going to have one and then pass out drunk. You're not going to have one and – your mouth be on fire or so dry that you know you're gonna you know get from the bar and leave you know it's you can literally get all five of those back to back to back and not be you know tired or or you know fatigued you know they're all really light and full of flavor so yeah sure. you don't you don't have 13 eight percent or higher beers on tap like funky buddha did yesterday and part of the reason i'm hung over today <laughs> <laughs> thanks john <laughs> but yeah that is part two delicious. we're gonna go into part three here in a second after a quick break so we're back for part three. I just got special, but we'll get into that later. Whoop, whoop. Extra special. But going to into uh, the next couple five beers here at Bang and Banjo. Darren, what do we got for number one? Bum Diddy. Bum Diddy? Bum, bum Diddy, Bum Diddy, Bum Diddy. Bum Diddy. You guys are actually the first person, peoples, first peoples to try this beer. We're releasing it tomorrow. Oh, well, all Monday, right. Monday the 20, 20th. And we're doing a bunch of, we're actually putting this one in distribution. It's a... Belgian style wit. You've got your uh, oh, yeah. orange peel in oh, it, yeah. your coriander, light, sessionable, five percent. I mean, this is it's summer beer, beer, period. Yeah, I mean that's you, you get it. It's it's light. It's you get the you know you get it's, it's hitting style, absolutely. And, and it's a little bit of it's a little bit dry, uh, dry a enough too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Really that's good. Fantastic. That's solid. Thirst quenching as heck. Mm-hmm. Props to the uh, the name too. Bum diddy, bum diddy. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's very What'd not think, Belgian. <laughs> uh, it's freaking delicious. I yeah. crush that. That's like next to, for me, the cream ale is, pro- is probably one of my favorites from the 
the year the rounds, but yeah. this bum ditty is. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think that cream ale was like was really it kind of blew me away with that cream ale, and this is this is really good too. It's really yeah. good, fantastic. Yeah. I like that you know, a lot. The, and it's interesting because with this, with a lot of Belgian wits, what I tend to get is a little bit of a spiky mouthfeel sometimes. Yep. And it's just a little harsh going down, whereas this one had a lot of the cream ale smoothness to it. It's very velvety, very soft, but right. you still had the coriander. You still had the orange. You still had those big, light wheat flavors to it. Sure. Yeah, a lot of times the coriander can overpower a yeah. lot in a, in a white, in a Belgian white. So that's that's, that's really good. That's, that's in really check, good. and it's no, balanced. Please. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where uh, we – Anytime I go to a new brewery, new place I've never been to before, first thing I'll do is, even before a flight, uh, assuming I'm going to have more than one beer, uh, I'm going to order the lightest beer on the menu they have, a p full pint of it. If I can't get through a full pint of your lightest beer without, you know, and sure, you know, I, I don't expect perfection, but, you know, if I can't get through a full pint of your lightest beer, I'm not really interested in the rest of whatever you have. The lightest beer you have is going to show the most transparency in what you can brew, what kind of brewery you are, and everything of that sort. Yeah, That's it's the hardest to hide any off flavors, hide any, you know, hide anything behind. It's a, you know, white wheat's tough. There's not a lot of backbone to hide anything. It's easy to overdo ingredients. It's easier to overpower Absolutely. the beer. And if you can do a light beer well, then you can probably do a heavy beer well too. And I mean, at the end of the day, your lightest beer is what the majority are going to drink. That's what, if you Absolutely. can't get a craft beer person to enjoy your light beer, you know, that's something maybe you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Right. Tweak the recipe or whatever. And I'm not saying yeah. it's bad or wrong, but craft beer people should like everything from your lager to your biggest, burliest stout. Right. My, I agree with that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, just you're my right. principle and thoughts on right. that. Right. I, I agree with that. So, Darren, hit me with number two. Uh, number two is Washboard. Washboard. Oh, I had Washboard already. That was the beer I got when I got here. So Same thing here. Uh, good wheat. Dry, Real good. Dry hopped with Amarillo. Um, I like that. That was the like beer that, that we were going to do instead of the Goza. And that was a last-minute swap out. I'm glad we got it out uh, right for summertime. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely get the nice haziness in it. And, I mean, it's light, but it still has a lot of full flavor and body. Again, in at 5.2 or 5.3%, I can't remember. It's what I'm. It's in my pint glass here now. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I don't even like wheats, and I like this beer. <laughs> it has like a good spice hop character exactly. to it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. Say that. yeah, it's right at the end. All it's three like of us were going to say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I love wheats, and I don't like hop, but I like the two meshed together. And that's it, it just gives it a little, a little bit different, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It's just that tiny little, it's almost like a peppery spice kind of, but it's just perfect the way it plays into the beer. Um, and it's not, because a lot of times wheat beers will be very boring or they'll be very fruity. This is hoppy, but it's not. It's just a little bit of that spice in there that just adds a little something without changing the entire beer. Sure, right. absolutely. It, you know, it's session wheat with some hops. That's mm -hmm. like, yeah. that was... We wanted an American wheat ale, not an American wheat IPA, you know, but right. something with some hops to it. Because, uh, again, we're not huge fans of wheat ales. It just so happens we did both because they're great for summer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we're in, we're in South Florida. It's hot. It's true. Yeah. So, Darren, what's number three? Uh, studious. Studious? Studious. So, the second, or I guess the third uh, version uh, with a beer named after someone um, that we know. It's a red IPA. Didn't come out the way that I wanted it to, I like but <laughs> but uh, I think it came out uh, pretty good. Um, I'm definitely a fan of it. You get a, a lot of that maltiness in it, that yeah, caramel flavor, and yeah. the hops. Um, I mean, definitely there. You yeah. know, it's. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Jeff. I know you want oh, to say I really, something. I really like red IPAs. That's that's good. It hits style. Um, it, it doesn't have a, a lot of hop. Uh, finish it just kind of up front and a little bit on your on your palate and then it doesn't finish with the hops yeah. so much so um, it's a solid it's definitely a solid beer it's not one of my favorites that we've had yet today but it's it's a good red IPA thanks mm -hmm. even as far as IPAs go it tends to be a little bit less brutal and once again this is this is almost like what some less scrupulous brewers would just call their red ale Right. Right. Or even hoppier than this. Oh, that's just our red ale. Or a hoppy yeah, red. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But still there, you can definitely taste a very good, artful 
malt blending and just an expert use of the hops, which is one of the it's things. Gr- yeah, that's really good. Fantastic I, job of. Yeah, I Thank like you. that you're doing a red uh, red IPA too. That's not a style you see a whole lot of. No, um, you see more of of the hoppy red ale, or you see you know big crazy face melting IPAs that are basically double IPAs, but they just call them an IPA because a double IPA is a triple IPA, and who freaking knows anymore? <laughs> we just make it all up. But um, no, I, I I wish there was more red IPAs out there, and I'm really actually happy that you're doing one. So. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, I'm. It came out uh, it definitely came out good. Uh, I know, like uh, again, I said it wasn't quite what uh, I uh, I wanted. Um, Matt liked it quite a bit too. I think we wanted more of a uh, more dry hop on it, more of that like hop nose, and a little bit more in the finish. I mean, thing is, I despite it being a red, I despite. I do like it the way it came out, but to me, it doesn't embody the red IPA like and what a red IPA truly is as much as um, I would want it. Um, with that being said, uh, I feel like red IPA should have that like fruit malt complexity, almost similar to a quad without all those like Belgian spiciness. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Darren, numero quattro. It's charisma. Charisma. What is no charisma is a potion. Style, it's a potion. Charisma potion. So it's a Belgian style double. Um, I think it's the second best of the Belgian series that we've done. The best being That's very Belgian. The invincibility yeah, the potion. Very Belgian. Like pure Belgian. That's that yeah. actually smells like I just cracked like a Saint Bernardus double or something. It's <laughs> really potent nose. Comes yeah. in at seven and a half percent. The body on it is just smooth and delicious. Uh, you get. Uh, a little bit of that like banana bubble gum yeah. in it and then plenty of those spicy notes that just play with the uh the malts yeah um, it's like caramel. a fruity a fruity sweetness in there it's very good i'd like to think it's a uh true to style uh belgian style mm-hmm. double well darren what do you think of the uh the belgian honestly it's delicious i could crush that like it's would you so yeah it's n- so nice like i'm never I've went, I originally started German styles and then went into Belgians before I got like onto the U.S. styles. Yeah. And honestly, I, I've been drifting away from Belgians more and more, but this Belgian's delicious and <laughs> makes you, you want to start drinking a little more of them again. Right. What are you thinking, Dave, on the on the double or double? That may- double. I, I called it double Dubel double. for so long. For so long. It's like, yeah, I'm They're so- all right. Every every Tripel, way to say it is triple, right. Yeah. Yeah. Double, we all know what you're trying dipple. to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like you said, fantastic. True to style has that big bubble gummy sort of a flavor mm-hmm. to it. Nice heavy on the so back. It's end. A definitely a big Belgian. Uh, I mean, it's love through Belgians. and through. Yeah, and last one, second to last one, Darren. Um, <laughs> get it together. Uh, get all up in close with me. Come on, underwater. 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 So underwater Which gazebo. Is, was it, my life had when we got here. Mm-hmm. So the underwater gazebo, the name has absolutely nothing to do with the beer. Uh, the neighborhood Matt and I used to live in, there was a gazebo in a hidden lake, and it just used to flood all the time. So <laughs> we just thought of that name, and we were like, hey, what, what beer do we put this you know, under? And uh, we're like, ah, let's just do the Rope Hus Porter, which BJCP just changed to American Porter. Um, that being said, uh, it's just a good old American porter. I mean, you know, something you can drink a ton of and have it be a dark beer without it being too heavy and yeah. too potent, but still full flavored. Uh, that's a good base porter, right? You know, with that and a, a cool, a cool name for it too. Yeah. Well, like we're gonna names. do a, a coffee day in August where we're gonna take a lot of our beers. We have a local roaster called Blooming Bean Coffee, name drop, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Pompano Beach, and she, uh, we're going to use a lot of her coffees for a lot of our beers. I'm hoping to get at least eight treatments of coffee, if not 12, and she does a delicious, absolutely delicious nitro coffee that uh, really? we're going to have uh, her on tap here that day, and we'll do like a little coffee, you know, team coffee day. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. cool. Yeah, I yeah. like that porter. It's a good base porter. I, for sure. I like that they change it to an American porter, but then when you're describing it, you're still going to use the word robust all sure. the time because that's that's what it is. And yep. so, big so heavy, uh, yeah, big heavy malt, lot, great coffee notes, really yeah. good coffee great notes in it. It's really They're really good. easy drinking, smooth. Yeah, you know, not overly coffee, not overly. And you roasted. could do like you were saying with coffee treatments. That would be incredible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it's actually interesting. One of the brewers up in Palm Beach County has a. Uh, coffee 
Twitter account. All he does is oh, just Joel. Yeah, Joel. Actually, <laughs> Joel. Oh, yeah, do yeah, south. No. Oh, um, yeah. At oh, Joel, he's coffee trouble. beer, and that's all he because he loves his coffee beers. And that's that's going to be the, that's the new thing, and it's amazing how people do what you're going to be doing, which is, you know, yeah, we'll do a coffee beer, but who's the roaster that's within 10 miles of my facility to do it? I just got a bottle from um, Big Top. And they, uh, yeah. the roaster that they worked with roasted the beans that morning. Yeah. And then brought it in. Absolutely. And, I mean, yeah. it just comes down to, you know, the dichotomy and that shift in everything, just going local with yeah. everything. Yeah. Local honey, local coffee, local Absolutely. mangoes, local everything. But I like that porter a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big nice. fan of that one too. Yeah. What did you think of the porter? Yeah. My wife liked it as well. <laughs> so, everyone's favorite. Yeah. I can see why. The porter? Or no, 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 that was a question. He's, oh. Everyone's oh, a question. Favorite. Oh, my favorite. Okay. Your favorite. Oof. Um, I want to say the cream ale. Okay. Yeah, but there's a lot of them that that are pretty close together. I would, yeah, I would say uh, the cream ale or the Belgian red. The Belgian red was phenomenal, oh, yeah. and yeah, it was yeah. just, it was just so. I'm actually, I'm gonna say the Belgian red. The cream ale blew me away, but um, the Belgian red was more surprising, and it was just. I'm not a big Belgian drinker, and it, it really knocked my socks off. So, that's the one I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go with the cream ale just because you guys brewed a cream ale that you won't make me want to drink. <laughs> that, thank you, because it's a tough one to find. And I, it's like with IPAs. People don't like IPAs right away. You keep drinking them until you find ones you like. And I just found a cream ale that I really enjoy, too. Yeah, like me with sours, I'm still trying. <laughs> well, you're working there. You're working. So. Dave. Dave, we already know your favorite. Yeah, Muda Voodoo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, Odin's great. I'll tell you, this is the first time that I had Charisma Potion. That one's fantastic. Good, give me a good solid double and I'll be happy. <laughs> it really is. And it, what's what's really good is that every beer that you we just tried, you've hit style. Like yeah, Jeff said, yeah. like every single one you've hit style. And there's, you know, a couple that were hybrid that you kind of combined, a red and a Belgian, and it worked out. And then uh, it was just, it's good to see someone that they offer you a beer and every beer is what you're expecting and it's going to get style, it's going to be flavorful. And not one here is like twelve percent gonna knock you on your on your face. Everything's drinkable, repeatable. Like you want people to stay and drink more beer, not have one and be like, "All right, I'm wasted. I need to go home." Or you know, mm -hmm. you know. So that retention, I think, is overlooked Any in terms day of beer consumers. Yeah. For everyday people, yeah. that's our motto. That's our slogan. We get a lot of people in here who order a flight, and they're like, "Hey, you know, this one and this one wasn't necessarily like." my favorite but i don't like those kind of beers but i enjoyed the entire flight and yeah. that's that's what we were kind of we just want to make beers that hey we're gonna find one and that you like and you're gonna like it a lot yeah and uh i actually brought a uh, special treat uh out of our fridge here to you guys um this is our chocolate banana milkshake imperial milk stout good god um <laughs> Everyone's smiling, the, by the way. It's the uh, <laughs> highest ABV of the beers we've had today, uh, or will be, at 8.4%. Uh, that's, that, uh, that's, that's about right, yeah. If you want to um, pour, uh, pass me the, uh, the glassware, I'll go ahead and pour some out. The bottle art we were talking about earlier is, is really, really cool. It's like a ice Looks cream like Mr. Monopoly. Float. A little with, bit. It's like ice cream with a mustache on top of a banana in a chocolate lake. Yeah. Well, there's a guy with a mustache riding the banana. That's vanilla ice cream. Oh, is it? I think so. Yeah. So while Adam is, is giving the... Instagram you know, it so that I can like it. <laughs> to his bartender. The smell You're the only person great. I really like look at, look at Instagram. I, I scroll through all my friends' uh, stuff, and I see your beers, and I like it. <laughs> just I don't even... Like, well, I mean, yeah, I'll pop it on Instagram, but I've you know, got to write all this stuff up. Right. Yeah. Might as well. You yeah, know? Jeff doesn't even look at the stuff I post. Not as much. <laughs> not as much as I look at your stuff. <laughs> so, the flavor text. Remember that feeling you'd get as a kid when your parents would treat you to ice cream? Yeah. Well... For our first bottle release, we present to you our banana chocolate milkshake, Imperial Milk Stout. Loaded with bananas and cocoa nibs, this beer brings us back to those days when we were so excited to get a scoop of ice cream on a cone when the world was much simpler. We hope, the, we hope to invoke these feelings in you with this beer. The only thing that's missing is a cherry and some whipped cream. 
You could put whipped cream on top. You could, yeah. It smells really. Oh, I'm getting roasted a nice chocolate and a roasted bit of rich, roasted and rich chocolate, like wow. a dark chocolate with a little bit of banana, a little bit of vanilla too. The flavors. Banana has wow. fallen off a touch That's since so it was fresh, but yeah. um, we didn't add as much banana in it as you would think. We wanted. We didn't. Oh, oh boy. We didn't. So want, good. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh boy. This is why I knew that we would be missing out. Oh boy. Out. Oh, so, yeah. It's basically, you just put this on, this as an wow. ice cream float. Oh, yeah. Done. Oh, this yeah. Is, done. This is done. chocolate ice cream. It's not a yeah. chocolate beer. That's, it's like, it tastes like chocolate ice cream. Oh, it's incredible. With a nice yeah. banana. Yeah. It's, banana you just, notes to it. you just smell the glass and it smells like stepping into a Baskin Robbins. Yeah. It really yeah. does. <laughs> that is an excellent description. This I, changes oh. the game. <laughs> changes the game. This Unbelievable is, beer, great job. This is, yeah, and 8.4 percent. It doesn't taste. No, it doesn't. No. It, it's, this it's one is it dangerous. It drinks like any of our other sessionable beers. And thank you for sharing this. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you so much. This is, oh my god, this is so good. I'm looking at the bottle and I see the straw sticking out of the melted chocolate, uh-huh. and I'm like, I, I could just take a straw <laughs> and just chug this beer like right now. I, it would just. I mean, this beer is is perfect. Yeah. 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 You have more bottles of this. Uh, not many, but yes. If you get a nice brewery, it'd be a shame if there was something that would have happened to it. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we have uh, security cameras and uh, alarm, but yeah, no, they broke in. The you. only thing that they stole is the banana milk milkshake. <laughs> no, right? What the hell? Yeah, there was a. Brewery. I know who did it. <laughs> yeah. They left the root beer though. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody documented that they were going to break in here. Who was that again? <laughs> yeah. Wrote up an article about it. <laughs> And no, our, uh, fantastic beer, really, really phenomenal. And just well balanced. This, this is your well, your well for sure. Like, is it? I think so. Yeah, everything is is great, but I think every brewery has that one beer that it just sets it above. That is exceptional. I think that's yours. Like right this there. could be your maple bacon coffee porter, or, <laughs> like or your Coors Light. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, we've got one of those. It's called Cypress Creek. Oh, I was just gonna say the tap. You know, the water. Um, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, it's been – do you really have a signature beer at this point, or do you just brew? Because a lot of breweries that are kind of your your age don't really – yeah, we're not going to have a signature. We're just going to brew what we like, and if people like one more than the other, that's okay. Well, it's kind of tough to say. Um, you know, our, of our six-year rounds – Everyone loves the Odins, the Cypress, the Hop, the Goza. Not everyone loves all of them, but we uh-huh. have, like, such good... We wanted to keep six year-round beers on that, hey, if you come here, these are always going to be here. Like, right. and, you know, except when we screw up, of course. But, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> beers that you can count on all the time to be consistent and the same. And for us, it's also a test and a challenge for us, uh, especially on a three-barrel, to be able to do that with consistency. And... Then on top of that, I mean, I don't know. We Our chocolate-covered peanut porter, candy cane porter, both of those came out awesomely. Our uh, county fair pumpkin porter was a huge hit as well. Mm-hmm. I remember um, that one. That one was fantastic. This beer, our Hootenanny Throwdown double IPA, was ridiculous. Hootenanny God, Throwdown. I love Hell these names yes. so much. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Our pure unfiltered Justice American Strong Ale that uh, I just bottled on Friday. Um we really like the way that came out. That's like, <laughs> it's almost like a summer barley wine, if you yeah, can believe ooh, that. Nice. And it's just, uh, it's hop loaded and not in a bad way. Right, and, right. You know, a lot of centennial. Well, I'm glad we, we wrapped up the show with this beer. Yeah. It yeah. just made everything even that much better. So, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty real really nice. smooth. It's like dessert after I, a nice know. dinner. I mean, this, I, if it was if it was interesting to you to have a flagship beer or something like that, this could be your specialty <laughs> beer without wink, question. Wink <laughs> really really without summer. question, and that could be that that could be your you know event release beer, you know, <laughs> and it, it easily could because it this beer should have a following. And, and then you I just mail a couple bottles to Orlando and uh, you know, call it a day. You know <laughs> well, saying? we'll have a uh, a slim keg of it on next Saturday when we release our pure unfiltered justice. Nice. Uh, Every bottle release we do, we're going to keep one keg around of the previous beer and just con- uh, continue that cycle for as long as we can. And then uh, 
our one year anniversary I'll have uh, another keg out. as well awesome nice. so nice. awesome really cool two more opportunities to uh, get you know another keg of, well, get another taste of it if you would yeah for sure definitely for sure so we were wrapping up this episode with banging banjo and Florida beer blog so we're gonna go around so we're gonna start with Dave anything you want to plug or let the audience know more uh, about what you do where I is it plug me do it yeah <laughs> do it this is the time i was gonna know, right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like let's see floridabeerblog.com uh twitter at florida beer blog instagram at florida beer blog facebook is fl beer blog because facebook was stupid i don't know why um <laughs> gosh what else am i on? a lot I'm of people on agree everything. with that statement yeah <laughs> yeah i'm on untapped i'm on Tumblr, I'm on Tinder. T- no. <laughs> Insta. At least you didn't say grinder. So that was, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm rude, but not that rude. <laughs> um, the other thing that I guess I wanted to plug, just uh, say hi, because I gave you guys a six pack of Inoculum. He's a pretty good guy. They making some uh, good sour beers out of mm-hmm. Spring Hill, Florida. Mail order only, which, yes, is legal as long as you get the right permits. Nice. And, um, yeah, so hopefully you'll cool. be able to yeah, enjoy we're those. Forward to that. I'll put yeah. all the links to Florida Beer Blog on the – Yeah. As you're talking. And I'm sure – because I actually listen to you on YouTube. That's how I all listen right. to your stuff. So I'm, I'm sure that I will be at work listening to this and click over to the YouTube page and hopefully see that gorgeous logo that oh, you, my you wife's bet. friend created for me. It's gorgeous. So, yeah. Adam, your turn. Anything you want to give a shout-out to, plug – um yourself you know Florida shout out to uh <laughs> my partner matt uh you know everyone who helped build this place of course uh, we work hard here to just have a place where you can just kick back enjoy you know some not necessarily simple but just easy drinking beers mm. uh, any day beers as i like to say um any day of the week of course you know that's what that that, that motto statement right. means right um you know, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram at Bang and Bancho Brewing, uh, Twitter we're Bang and Bancho Brew. Come find us. We're a little bit hidden in Pompano, but we're easy to get to. Uh, I think anyone who comes here would definitely find a beer that they can enjoy. You know, maybe even two or three of. Cool. Um, we do growler fills in most beers, and uh, every once in a while you come in. Sometimes you never know where you're going to end up trying. Which is so. great because I'll come by on my way home and, you know, can't pick really up a stick growler around, and pick up a growler, go home, you know, spend time with my gorgeous wife, my gorgeous daughter, and have some big banjo at home, which is you know, a yeah. good night as That's far a, as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, lucky awesome. man. You, got, you yeah. got a good life going I, on there. I'm incredibly lucky. <laughs> <laughs> incredibly lucky. And uh, thanks to uh, you guys for coming over this way on this uh, glorious uh, Sunday Father's Day. Uh, yeah. Set up shop and just talk about beer, Florida beer blog, and uh, banjo. Yeah, we won't. Awesome. We won't tell my dad this is what I was doing on Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know if, uh, it's nice to know that it. your dad doesn't listen to the show. Yeah, definitely not. Hey, hey, don't, if don't I was tell your me dad, that. I would be proud of you. <laughs> if, if he listened to this show, he'd lose a lot of respect for me. <laughs> <laughs> no argument there. <laughs> but once again, thanks everybody for listening and watching. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Nailed it. He got them Nailed all this it. time. Two oh, for three. Forget the biggest one last time. Mm-hmm. YouTube. <laughs> but thanks again, Adam and Dave. You guys have been awesome. It's what thanks I'm here for, for, for your hospitality and your connections and that <laughs> chocolate banana. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thank milk you milk guys so much. This has been face. incredible. Milk's out. <laughs> milk's out. <laughs> Imperial milk's out. <laughs> but this wraps up our Bag and Banjo episode. And thanks you guys for listening and watching. We'll see you next time at the bar. Ciao.